Welcome Lights Out family to another episode of After Dark with KK. In this episode, KK will bring you some stories that will pique the interest of many Singaporean men who had been through either two and a half or two years of their much painful yet memorable years serving the army or what we call national service. Army ghost stories had always been a favourite of the local ghost stories loving fraternity and I would admit I enjoyed listening to some as much as the next person, especially when I could imagine myself in the particular chilly situation. Today, I will share with you a story from a friend of mine who I will address as R. R had an inclination to experience things of the paranormal nature, although he could not see things. I always enjoyed listening to his experiences, and he was gracious enough to jot down a smile chilling occurrence he had at Sungai Gedong Camp where he spent a year or so serving his due. Below is his experience, and I will narrate as R in a first-person point of view. Sungai Gedong Camp A place that's beyond heaven and hell, or so I like to joke. To get there, you need to travel past the endless rows of cemeteries at a columbarium called Nirvana, before you reach a place that many of us have come to call our personal purgatory. But is Gerdong Camp really one of the most haunted camps in Singapore? Many would think so since it is located beside Singapore's largest cemetery grounds. But oddly enough, I only had one good story to come out of my one and a half years there. Despite this, it remains one of the most fascinating stories from my NS days. I was in the transport unit which, as the name suggests, we are the drivers who moved the army. The building where we bunked in was beside the medical center, right beside the emergency room. The bunk I was allocated to was a small five-man bunk. Its layout was rather simple. After you enter the door, you have five beds in a neat row on your right, another neat row of lockers on the left and a central walkway that brought you down to the end of the room to a window which overlooked this huge gorgeous mango tree. And this is the location I had experienced the following scary experience. It was an average humid night with a light breeze blowing in an otherwise still evening. I went to bed early that night as I was on duty the next day and had to get to the office earlier to take over the previous day shift. I usually slept with my head facing the other way, not against the wall but away from it towards the central aisle so I could get direct wind from the wall mounted fans. There were mosquito nets installed on the windows that prevent any wind from entering the room so it can get very stuffy inside. The fans were our only source of ventilation. My bed was the first bed when you enter the room and this meant that my head would be right next to the door when I sleep. All in all, a disaster in terms of feng shui, but sometimes you gotta make do with what you have. So I was sound asleep when suddenly I was awoken by a loud bang from above my head. I'm usually a heavy sleeper, but this was so loud that I got jolted out of my sleep. I got up and supported myself on my elbow to turn around for a look. The door had slammed open but something was not right. The door stood open, but nobody walked through into the room. Now I have to talk about this door for a bit. It's not your typical bedroom door. It was made of solid wood and was heavier than most doors that I would usually need to lean into the door with my shoulder to open it. It also has one of those spring mechanisms that automatically closes the door once you let go of it. If you let the door go, it will close fully from its own weight until you hear the latch mechanism click. The handle wasn't a simple doorknob either. It was one of those lever type handles that needed you to press and turn to open. I think this room was initially designed to be an office before they converted it into a bunk for whatever unknown reasons. It had been 20 seconds or so since the loud bang but in the dead of the night, it felt like eternity. No one had shown themselves through the door yet. Still, all this while the door stood wide open, never wavering under its own weight. 
there was little wind, not enough to keep the heavy spring loaded door open for so long either. I had turned to look into the room to see the other guy in the bunk that night. Tan was sleeping in the last bed at the other end of the room. He too had also woken up from the bank and he like myself was staring at the open door. He looked at me with an expression on his face like, you are seeing this too right? I turned my attention back to the door. For some reasons, I didn't feel scared despite already suspecting this was a supernatural event. Instead, I felt annoyed that whoever this is had a gall to disturb my precious sleep. I was determined to have a stare down with the door and not go back to sleep until it closes itself. Faster show yourself lah, or close the damn door. I need to go back to sleep, I am on duty tomorrow, must wake up early, stop playing with me. Eventually, it took another minute before whatever invisible force was holding the door open had let go of its grips. The door smoothly but steadily closed the gap until the latch clicked. Finally, I can go back to sleep. And so I did. I laid back down and got comfortable and tried to go back into slumber. But there was a feeling inside me that the night wasn't over. About five or so minutes later, just as I was starting to drift off to dreamland, BANG! The door slammed open again. This time, I was beyond feeling annoyed. I couldn't care anymore. I didn't want to give whoever or whatever the satisfaction of a reaction. So I chose to just continue to lay in bed and pretend I was sleeping. I noticed that Tan had awoken like before as the spring of his bed creaked from the other end of the room. But I told myself not to get up and just try to go back to sleep. Just then, I heard something that wasn't present the first time round the door opened. I heard the sound of footsteps entering the room, as if someone was shuffling their feet on the floor as they walked lazily past me. It started from outside the room, then through the door above my head, and I could hear it walk down the central aisle all the way to the end. It then stopped in its tracks for a little bit before turning around and slowly dragged his feet back past the top of my head and out the door. The door stood open throughout the entire incident as before. I could hear the leaves gently rustling outside, until the footsteps had left the room. And then the door closed by itself and the acoustic returned to the usual stillness of the stuffy room. I then heard the creaks of Tan's bed again as presumably he laid back down in bed to sleep. Who was it that came into the room? Surely Tan would have said something to whoever it was if he actually saw someone walk in, right? Unless nobody actually walked in through the door the second time. The next morning, after I had started my duty and the guys had fallen out from the first parade, Tan eagerly came into the ops room to find me. Last night. The door opened right, I interjected. Yeah, twice. I know right? So who was it? Who opened the door? I asked. No one. I thought you were Saleh trying to play a prank on us, but he didn't come back last night. You know how he always like to slam the door open when he come back to bang in the middle of the night without care that we were all sleeping. Then I decided to tell him what I had heard. No, the second time, I didn't get up, but I was actually awake just lying in bed. I heard footsteps come in after the door opened, walk all the way in towards your bed and then turn around and walk out before the door closing again. So who was it that came into the room? Tan was flabbergasted. There was no one. I didn't hear anything. No footsteps. I'm very sure I heard footsteps in our bunk. So if you didn't see anyone even though I heard the footsteps right beside us, means our conversation fell into an awkward silence as reality hits us. Our platoon sergeant, who was standing beside me in the ops room, then revealed something that gave me a rude awakening. Last night, when I came back from nice out close to midnight, I saw the street leading to our camp main gate was strewn with just paper money. There was also a Chinese altar by the road and the candles were still burning. Someone was praying outside our camp. It's weird though. 
It had never happened before. And then it hit me. Just a week ago, exactly seven days before last night, something big happened in camp. Someone had a training accident and died in an emergency room at the medical center. The emergency room is right beside our building. That means, according to Chinese tradition, last night was the seventh day of his death, or Tou Qi. It is likely that the rituals held outside our camp was for the soldier's spirit, maybe to bring him home. Could the spirit who came into our room be that of the late soldier? Or could it be a different spirit who needed a place to hide as the soldiers from hell escorting the late soldier's spirit back to camp for his Tou Qi? But why our room? Why would any spirit choose to come to our room of all the rooms in the entire camp? Until today, I am left baffled. Thank you R for that creepy story. Before I share one story from my platoon mates during my basic military training days, I tried to scour the internet for some similarly skin crawling stories. And from Reddit, we have servicemen from the past decades gave us accounts of many famous haunted camps out there in Singapore. From Reddit user Malayan Man Guy, he narrated his time at Handon Camp for the commandos. During outfield not far from the camp itself, one of his batchmates told the rest during the simulated mission that he was puzzled why one of their sergeants had changed out of their combat outfit into an entirely white garment and kept waving at him in the dense vegetation. His stories was corroborated by another soldier within the platoon who corrected the first guy that it was not a sergeant but a strange old man. The next day, both soldiers developed high fever and bedridden for the next couple of days. From Reddit user Mini Chong about Amukui Camp, which was used by the 2nd Battalion Singapore Infantry Regiment. There was haunted room in the company line which was eventually cornered off. However, Chong and his section mates stayed there for 6 months, therefore it was easy to stumble back to the particular room by mistake. One day, a section mate made the mistake thinking that Chong was in the room lazing on his bed and when he went in to surprise Chong, he was in turn surprised that the person he thought he saw was just a figment of his imagination. The scary thing was that this guy was traumatized when Chong and the rest reminded him that how he had went into that wretched room when it had been locked up for months. Last but not least, from user Skaldi, he told a familiar tale from the basic military training camp in Pulau Tekong. It was about 2 a.m. one fateful evening when he and his buddy who was sleeping on the top bunk were both woken up by audible banging of their metal cabinet. Since both of them had witnessed the unnatural banging, they were spooked out and tried to get back to sleep, which of course was a tall order. Vertic the next morning, they shared what they had experienced with the rest of the platoon before another platoon mate who was a Malay chap from the adjourning bunk with a shaken expression tell the rest that he too encountered the same deal with the metal cabinet banging. Unlike his two lucky Chinese mates, he actually saw a frail looking woman atop of the cabinet look staring at him with her feet doing the banging. He knew that it was the start of what he described as a dirty period for the Muslim, but little did he knew he was so unlucky to see what he had seen. Speaking of the Kong, I had spent five long excruciating months on the godforsaken piece of land. During our downtime, our superiors loved to scare us with the ghost stories as if we were not spooked enough. There were stories of bunks with talisman, purportedly of Muslim persuasion to quell strong haunting incidents within these bunks, and that someone accidentally removed the talisman and the bed within the bunk got shook violently that very night. And there were resident ghosts on the islands as well. The most famous is that lady ghost in glowing red who sat atop of the Jacob's Ladder of the Standard Obstacle Course ground, who purportedly was weeping and hoping to see her departed husband on the higher ground. A story shared during my time was that an unfortunate recruit had a scary encounter with her when she followed her up the stairs of his company line. The other famous ghost was a grandmother and her grandson who would wander around bunks at night 
and those sleepless soldiers would wake up and see the two apparitions looming in their bunk before the grandson would point at their direction and inform the grandma. Amma, that one has not sleep yet. It seems like one of my platoon mates also had the honour to encounter this friendly grandma. My BMT was in the old camp tree during the late 1990s and I was assigned to Hawk Company and we were given the bunks on the top floor of a six-storey building and no, we did not have elevator in the company line. One of our usual activities after dinner when the sun set was to be at the parade square which was enclosed by the L-shaped company line and the cookhouse where us recruits would painstakingly clean and oil our rifles and of course, some useless talks with the sergeants and sharing ghost stories as well. Reporting sick was always a sticky issue among the recruits. While there were instances of malingering or cao keng, contracting high fever could not be faked. A platoon mate called D had a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius and was confined to bunk. He didn't even have appetite for dinner that particular evening. He was groggy while decimated by his physical condition and went in and out of sleep, apparently not 100% sure what actually happened around him that day. Around 7 plus or so, he woke up again and noticed a silhouette closing in at the rear door of the bunk. His bed was strategically facing the rear door, which was almost never shut when an unfamiliar old lady appeared at the door. Due to his illness, D was not spooked out by an old lady in the company line, nor did he really care at that point. Then, in thick Hokkien dialect, the old lady asked, Where are your friends? Without thinking too much of this inquiry, D replied in his groggy state in Chinese. They are downstairs, cleaning the rifles. The old lady seems to be nodding in acknowledgement before turning and walked towards the other way of the corridor and Dee went back to sleep. The next day, Dee got better and this piece of memory came into him and the more he thought about it, the more he started to feel goosebumps all over his body. He shared with the rest of the platoon which was why I got to know about it and thank God, our time BMT was nearing the end by then and I hoped to never see the old lady ever. But remember when I said our bunk was on level 6? She must be a real fit grandma. Apologies for the tongue in cheek in the end. Please forgive me Ama goes of pull out the comb. Hope today's episode was able to satisfy anyone out there who enjoyed army ghost stories. And if you have any to share, please email us at this email address, which I will also share in the description of this video. You can also join our Facebook group and share your stories there allowing me to do proper narrations in future episodes of After Dark. And for those young men who are in the midst of serving or about to serve the army, encountering supernatural events, be it yourself or your platoon mates, it is a natural rite of passage for national service, so don't be petrified when it happened to you. Please like and share this video as always. Till next time, good night, lights out family.